In this video, I'll talk about the vibration, rotation, spectrum of each cell. Each cell molecules move really fast in the gas phase. They move at several hundred meters per second. They also rotate and vibrate really fast. Each cell molecules rotate about one trillion cycles per second. They vibrate more than 10 trillion cycles per second. After a HCL molecule absorbs an infrared photon, it can vibrate even faster. At the same time, it may rotate faster or slower. We call that rotational excitation and de-excitation. So first, I will show you the IR spectra of HCL and DCL. This is the IR spectrum of HCL. The horizontal axis is the infrared wave numbers in inverse centimeters. The vertical axis is absorbance. So over here, you see a gap in the middle. The left-hand side, you see a bunch of doublets. On the right-hand side, you see a bunch of doublets as well. So in the middle, this is pure vibration. There's no rotational transition, and thus is forbidden, dictated by quantum mechanics. On the left-hand side, it's vibrational excitation plus rotational excitation. On the right-hand side, that's vibrational excitation plus rotational de-excitation. Therefore, you have lower wave numbers. On the right-hand side, they are called P-branch. The left side is the R branch. In the middle, that's Q branch. Remember the alphabetical order of P, Q, R. So P branch, Q branch, which is missing, and R branch. Now let's look at the range. This is between 2,700 to 3,000. In the middle, this is roughly 2,880. 2,880 for HCL. How about DCL? This is roughly 2090. Only 70% of 2880 of HCL. Why? Very simple. The reduced mass of DCL is twice that of HCL. And the wave number is inversely proportional to the square root of the reduced mass. Therefore, this number 2090 is only 70% of 2880 because the square root of 1 over 2 is 70%. Again, we see a bunch of doublets. This is because in nature we have chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. We have 25% of heavier chlorine 37 and 75% of lighter chlorine 35. Let's get back to the lab menu here. The goal of this lab is to analyze the infrared spectra to determine the bond distance, the bond energy, zero point vibration energy, the inharmonicity, the force constant, the rotational constant, and the coupling constant between vibration and rotation of HCl and DCl. We'll focus on chlorine 35, Although we can also do chlorine 37, but the procedures are exactly the same. Your prelabs should be concise and informative with more emphasis on data analysis, which is the most difficult part of the lab. The lab report should include the following sections, the title page, the abstract, your theoretical prediction of the ranking of the wave numbers of the four isotopic molecules, HCl35, DCl35, HCl37, and DCl37. And again, they just differ by the number of neutrons, and therefore they differ by this reduced mass mu. Experimental data, I want you to tabulate the data and graph the data. 
one thing is very important please stick to the SI units I give you the IR spectra of HCL and DCL with wave numbers in inverse centimeters so convert that to inverse meters remember one inverse centimeter is equal to 100 inverse meter why because one inverse centimeter means you have one wave within the one centimeter length therefore you have 100 waves within the one meter length data analysis and calculations so first I want you to be able to identify the P and R branches of hydrogen CL 35 the P branch has in general lower wave numbers than the R branch again the R branch peaks are the vibrational excitation plus rotational excitation the P branch is the vibrational excitation plus the rotational de excitation and also you need to distinguish chlorine 35 from chlorine 37 based on their ratio of natural abundance step two I want you to label all those spectral lines for example in the R branch you have to label 0 to 1 rotational transition 1 to 2 rotational transition etc and for the P branch same thing we're talking about rotational de excitation therefore the rotational quantum number decreases by 1 I want you to label 1 to 0 2 to 1 etc so label 6 peaks in the R branch and 6 peaks in the P branch and then assign the J values what's J? J is the quantum number of the rotational state and then later we'll talk about a new variable M M is related to J and we will be able to write a function of this M a quadratic function of M as the analytical expression of the wave number of the infra infrared photon and then we're going to make an Excel graph do a second order polynomial function fit to obtain a few coefficients based on the three coefficients in the second order polynomial function we will be able to determine alpha sub e b sub e and omega 0 to 1 in the Excel chart this is the vibrational rotational coupling constant this is the rotational constant and this is the pure vibrational wave number and given these numbers we will be able to compute the bond distance of HCL and later you will be able to use this omega 0 to 1 that's from the ground vibrational state to the first vibrational state and another number it's called overtone from the ground vibrational state to the second vibrational excited state to solve a couple equations to get this omega e omega e chi e. this omega e is the harmonic vibrational wave number this is the inharmonicity given those omega e and omega e chi e, you will be able to compute the force constant and the bond energy of HCL once that's done repeat all those calculations for DCL and you will see DCL and HCL have roughly the same bond energy and the same bond distance the reason is simple if you look at the shortened equation of HCL and that of DCL they are essentially the same however they differ in vibrational frequencies and zero point vibrational energies because of the difference in reduced mass and then work on the discussion section you have to answer a few questions followed by at least one reference 
I would recommend you to use either the NIST web book or the CRC handbook. Uh, this is a page of physical constants, so you can take a look at those. Uh, again, one inverse centimeter is 100 inverse meter. Over here, those are the atomic masses of HD, Cr35, and chlorine-37. Those are the overtones of these molecules. Uh, the overtone is simply the vibrational transition from the ground state to the second excited state. Now let's look at the uh, uh, theoretical part of this lab. First, let's review the harmonic oscillator model of HCl. The potential energy of a harmonic oscillator is half kx squared. We plug in this into the Schrodinger equation here. This is the potential energy. And over here, this is the kinetic energy. So together, it's just h psi. h psi equals e psi. And then we can solve the Schrodinger equation. What about this mu? This mu is the reduced mass. The equation for mu is this. And this equation is equivalent to this equation. After solving the Schrodinger equation, we'll see the vibrational energy level of the atomic molecule is equal to m plus half times h times the frequency of the oscillator. It must be a non-negative integer and can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And also we can convert the frequency to wave number. Frequency of a photon equals the speed of light times the wave number of the photon. Now let's look at the rotation. So if we have a rigid rotor, um, that means the radius between the two masses is a constant. That means the bond distance between hydrogen and chlorine is a constant. If that's the case, again, we write out the Schrodinger equation for rotation. This is the kinetic energy. This is the potential energy. So what's the value of this V function? It's zero. When x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to r naught squared. So r naught is simply the radius of a surface. x, y, and z are the coordinates of the hydrogen atom, assuming hydrogen is rotating about chlorine. V is infinity if the hydrogen leaves the sphere. So for simplicity, we can simply say this part is zero, assuming the rotation is a rigid rotation. So again, the distance between hydrogen and chlorine remains constant. When that's the case, we can simply do some transformation from x, y, z to r, theta, and phi. And you can see this x, y, z are functions of r. Theta, theta correspond to the latitude of Earth. And phi, phi correspond to the longitude of Earth. Okay, and if we do that, we can convert the Schrodinger equation to this form. It looks more complicated. And uh, theta and phi are involved. What is this i? i is the moment of inertia. i is equal to the reduced mass mu times r naught squared. r naught is the bond distance between hydrogen and chlorine. The solution is simple. It's just j times j plus 1 times h bar squared over 2i. i is the moment of inertia. j is the rotational quantum number. And in physics and chemistry, people also write this in a different form. It's j times j plus 1 times hc b sub e. b sub e is the so-called rotational constant. 
And therefore, we know Hc b sub e is equal to h bar squared over 2i. And then we can easily determine the value of b sub e using this equation, given the value of the momentum of inertia of the molecule. Real molecules undergo simultaneous rotational and vibrational transition. So let's look at the rotational and vibrational energies together, right here. We need two quantum numbers. N is the vibrational quantum number. J is the rotational quantum number. The first term is the vibrational energy. The second term is the rotational energy. By looking at this equation, we should uh, realize that the harmonic oscillator model is used to get the vibration energy. The rigid rotor model is used to get the rotation energy. N and J are vibrational and rotational quantum numbers. All right, in the real world, HCl is not a harmonic oscillator. It's inharmonic. HCl is not a rigid rotor. The distance between H and Cl changes. Therefore, a more accurate energy expression is provided here, which includes five terms. So first, this term is copied here. This term is copied here. But what about the three other terms? They're colored here. First, let's look at the last and the fifth term here in blue. This term is the coupling of vibration and rotation. Why do they couple? It's very simple. When each cell vibrates, the bond distance changes. When the bond distance changes, it will change the moment of inertia because the moment of inertia is mu times the bond distance squared. When this bond distance changes, I, the moment of inertia changes, and that will change the rotational energy level over here. So you look at this I, when I changes, this rotational energy changes. All right, get back to this. Now let's look at the second term in yellow. This is the inharmonicity correction because HCl is not really a harmonic oscillator. We're gonna show you a picture of the potential energy of this HCl molecule. Again, it's not half kx squared. More realistically, it's this equation. It's called Morse potential. So let's take a look at this picture. I'm going to make the picture a bit smaller so that we can see the whole thing. Over here, this is the potential energy. This is the bond distance, the distance between H and Cl. Over here, you have the equilibrium bond distance x equals 0, x is the displacement. This means H and Cl are at equilibrium positions right here. Uh, now let's look at the blue curve. That's the quadratic function of the potential energy of a harmonic oscillator. For a harmonic oscillator, based on Hooke's law, the potential energy is half kx squared. But in reality, the potential energy is the red curve. It levels off when the bond distance approaches infinity. That's much more realistic because if you imagine pulling HCl apart, the potential energy will level off instead of going up to infinity. So again, this red curve is more realistic than the blue one. Now let's look at the bond energy. Intuitively, we'll say the bond energy is just the distance between here, the zero level, to bottom of the potential energy well. Uh, it's called HCd sub e. Uh, this is the depth of the energy well. However, this is not the bond energy of HCl exactly. This is because even at zero Kelvin, um, the absolute zero temperature, HCl still vibrates. Therefore, there's a minimum vibrational energy here. We call that zero point vibration energy. Therefore, to break a HCl bond, 
you don't need this amount hcd sub e you just need hcd sub zero hcd sub zero is slightly smaller than hcd sub e they differ by this zero point energy of hcl all right so over here that's the theoretical derivation this is the shorting equation of the enharmonic oscillator so we're not going to really solve this right here right now i just want to remind you when you use the more realistic morse potential to express the vibration energy the result is this you have one additional negative term here and it's proportional to m plus half squared and each new squared divided by 4 hc d sub e so by looking at this you realize this hc depth, uh, d sub e the depth of the energy well is part of the vibrational energy formula and because the frequency is equal to the speed of light times wave number for a photon we just plug it in and we can express the vibrational energy in terms of wave numbers so you got this wave number here, wave number here, etc. And we can define a new variable, chi e. It's a Greek letter chi, chi sub e to be omega e over 4 dE. We replace this part with chi e. And then we get a simplified vibrational energy for inharmonic oscillator. This first part is for harmonic oscillator. The second negative term is to make corrections for inharmonicity. This chi e is a very small constant without any unit. All right, get back to the complex five term uh, energy expression for both vibration and rotation. Again, this is the vibration energy for harmonic oscillator. This is for inharmonic correction. This is for the rotational energy levels. The last term is for the coupling between vibration and rotation. What about this green term? The fourth green term is uh, the so-called centrifugal distortion that accounts for the fact that the HCL rotor is not rigid. The bond distance between HCL may change during the rotation. Fortunately, this D value is much, much smaller than the B value. So uh, most of the time, we can neglect this uh, fourth term in green, as long as J is not too big. So in our calculations, we just use uh, the peaks that correspond to J equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and most 6. And then we can uh, safely neglect this HCD term. Okay, again, this is because D is much, much smaller than B sub E. Even though this uh, J squared, J plus 1 squared is much larger than J times J plus 1, uh, this entire term is much smaller than the rigid rotor uh, rotational energy. All right, and now we have only four terms after we neglect this uh, a non-rigid correction. So we will keep these four terms. It's too complicated, but uh, we know one thing uh, from quantum mechanics. Uh, the vibrational transition and rotational transition must follow a very simple rule. It's called selection rule. Delta N must be plus minus one. Delta J must be plus minus one. Uh, for inharmonic oscillators, delta n, the change of the vibrational quantum number can be plus minus 2, plus minus 3. But, you know, this kind of transitions are very, very weak. So mostly it's delta n equals plus minus 1. And when n is from 0 to 1, it's called fundamental transition. When n is from 0 to 2 or 3, they are called overtones. This 0 to 2 is the first overtone. This is the second overtone. At the room temperature, most of the HCl molecules are in the ground vibrational state. Therefore, most transitions are from 0 to 1, the fundamental transition. 
hardly we as observe the one to zero vibrational de excitation. That makes the analysis of the vibrational transition simple. About rotations, uh, the HCL molecules occupy a good number of uh, vibrational energy levels. Uh, this is because the vibrational energy spacing or the vibrational energy is much smaller than the uh, vib the rotational energy spacing is much smaller than the vibrational energy spacing. So this e rot is pretty small, and if this is small, this exponential function is fairly big, even if the rotational energy state has a higher energy than the ground state. And for this, uh, um, the number of HCl molecules in each rotational energy levels, that number is proportional to the degeneracy times this exponential function. The degeneracy 2j plus 1 is because in the jth rotation energy level, you can have different values for the z component of the rotation. Again, when you are talking about rotation, this HCl molecule may rotate about x, y, and z axis simultaneously. And if we are focusing on the uh, z component, it can be from negative j all the way to j times a constant. And from negative j, negative j plus 1, all the way to j, you have 2j plus 1 different z components. That's called the degeneracy of the j's rotational energy level. All right, again, uh, HCl molecules may occupy excited rotational uh, states, and therefore we can observe uh, this uh, delta j being plus 1 or negative 1. We can observe 0 to 1 excitation and 1 to 0 de-excitation. And also, we can observe 1 to 2 excitation and 2 to 1 de-excitation, etc., etc. Um, you don't have to worry about this part in italic font. This is a side note on how to determine the temperature of the gas remotely by looking at its infrared spectrum. So I'm going to skip this. And uh, I will show you the diagram of the vibrational excitation coupled with the rotational excitation or de-excitation. So first, Let's look at the bottom line here. That's the vibrational ground state. So th this bottom line. So we can go from A equals 0 to A equals 1. But if you do that, it's forbidden because the J value is 0 here. The J value is also 0 here. 0 to 0 transition is forbidden. You must change the J value by 1, either plus 1 or minus 1. Let's look at delta J equals plus 1. So this line is A equals 0, J equals 0. Over here, A equals 1, J equals 1. So both the J and N increase by 1. Look at here, this one. N is from 0, still, this is vibrational ground state. So N is still from 0 to 1. How about J? J is from 1 to 2. Over here, J is from 2 to 3. 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. Uh, experimentally, we'll just use the first 6 R branch data to do our calculations. Again, because if J is too big, we will have to look at the changes of the bond distance between H and CO. It's no longer a rigid rotor. Okay, uh, again, by looking at this 6 peaks, we realize delta J is positive 1. This is rotational excitation. What about rotational de-excitation? Okay, over here. N is from 0 to 1, but J is from 1 to 0, 2 to 1, 3 to 2, 4 to 3, 5 to 4, 6 to 5. Again, the first six peaks of the P branch can be used 
to do the calculations. And then this is a uh, simulated infrared. It's, uh, it looks very similar to the experimental IR. Uh, you have P branch here, R branch here. In the experimental spectra, you see R branch on the left-hand side, P branch on the left-hand side. Uh, now we're going to do uh, a little bit of durations. So first, the vibration and rotation energies consist of four terms. Harmonic oscillation and harmonic correction, rotational energy, vibrational and the rotational coupling here. And now we're going to do uh, just uh, a um, R-type, R-branch transition. A is from 0 to 1. J increases by 1. So this is our initial state. This is our final state. We can plug in the values of N and J to get the initial state here. We plug in the values of N and J plus 1 here to get the final state of the transition. And then we take the difference. So this uh, equation minus e this equation will give us the wave number of the infrared photon absorbed by this HCl molecule in the R branch. So after this derivation, we will be able to get the change of the energy in the R branch. It's here. It's still quite complicated. Again, alpha E is the vibrational rotational coupling. BE is the rotational constant. Omega 0 to 1 is the pure vibrational transition. All right, and uh, notice that this equation is a function of J. It's a second order polynomial function of J. And the change of the energy is simply the energy of the photon. The energy of the photon is H times C times wave number of the photon. HC and HC cancel, and then we obtain the wave number of the photon. So this is what you see in the infrared spectra. This number is a function of J. In particular, it's a second order polynomial function of J. Looks complicated. For the P branch, we do the same thing. We get the initial state energy and final state energy. We take the difference. The expression uh, is over here. That's the energy change during the vibrational excitation and rotational de-excitation. And then again, the energy of the photon equals the energy change. And then we have the wave number of the photon. Again, a second order function of J. So we get a different equation for the P branch than for the R branch. However, there is a smart way to pull the R and P branch data in the same graph. By defining a new variable M for the R branch, if we define M equals J plus 1, and for the P branch, if we define M to be negative J, the wave number of the photon is a simple function of M for both the R branch and the P branch. So basically we use the same polynomial equation for both the six peaks in the R branch and the six P branch. So it's good. Now we can put this 12 data points in the same Excel graph and then use the second order function to fit our experimental data. After we do that, we'll get the coefficients in front of m squared, m, and m to the power of zero. So those three coefficients are negative alpha e, two times be minus alpha e, and this wave number of pure vibration. Once you get these three parameters, you can do many other things. Uh, just be careful when you assign the m value. So this is the R branch in the simulated infrared. This is the P branch. However, in the experimental infrared spectra I gave you, the R branch is on the left-hand side, the P branch is on the right-hand side. All right, so uh, after you get this pure vibrational transition, um, and um, look up the overtone wave number, 
it's provided uh, I think on the page of physical constant and you have two linear equations given this two linear equations and two variables one variable is omega e the other variable is omega e times chi e treat this product as the second variable you will be able to solve these two equations and get the value of omega e and omega e chi e omega e can be used to compute the vibrational frequency of HCl and in turn the force constant of HCl. This omega E chi E will be able to help you obtain first the value of chi E, the inharmonicity constant, and two, it will help you um, obtain the bond energy of HCl. This is because uh, uh, this you can just use this equation without proving this d sub e equals omega e over 4 chi e so if you know omega e and chi e you can compute d sub e hc d sub e is the depth of the energy well over here this is the depth of the energy well minus the zero point vibration energy you will be able to get the bond energy of the hcl molecule for your convenience in addition to the experimental infrared spectrum of HCl, I typed up the numbers here. So those are the wave numbers in the experimental spectrum. And the J values, M values, J values, and M values of the P branch and L branch are given to you. So you can just uh, you know copy paste these numbers in the Excel spreadsheet. But remember, First thing you need to do, you need to do is to convert this inverse centimeter to inverse meters, please. Always, always use the SI unit in your calculations, particularly for this lab. Uh, after this, you will be able to get the uh, do the analysis, get alpha e the vibe rot coupling. You will be able to get B sub E, the rotational constant. You will be able to get uh, omega 0 to 1, the pure vibrational wave number. You will be able to get the bond energy, bond um, distance, and some other parameters. And then make a similar table for DCL using the experimental infrared spectrum. Also tabulate the first six R branch data, the first six P branch data, like this, and then copy paste these numbers into your Excel graph. I'm sorry, into a Excel spreadsheet. You pull all 12 data together, and then convert inverse centimeter to inverse meters, and then do a second order polynomial fitting using this equation. And again, you'll get alpha E, you'll get B E, you'll get omega from 0 to 1 pure vibrational transition. From there, you just repeat the steps I just went over to get the bond energy, force constant, bond distance, etc., etc., for this DCL as well. In this lab menu, I also included Gaussian calculations, but unfortunately, uh, we will not be able to uh, uh, physically uh, sit in a real uh, PC lab. So this is skipped. Uh, the last part uh, over here, experimental instrument materials, experimental procedures, this is also skipped because of the coronavirus pandemic